Hello everyone, Mike Levin here on my third video of Work From Home Code with Mike Friday. And I just put in uh, these options, spam and eggs on a drop down menu for Pipulate. And I guess the question on everyone's mind is how long will you have to live with spam and eggs in my tutorials again? Well, we'll see for a little bit while longer because it occurs to me that I am going to need the, to show a different menu selection here based on uh, the invoke mode and I'll probably end up using um, invoke mode as a key to an object. I'm not exactly sure how that'll work under the Jinja templates, but one thing's for sure, the code to display the button is probably not going to end up here because I've got to build that pattern, at least the, the selection of options, the stack of options, but probably the selects also. It'll leave my uh, options open in the future to have different sort of widgets there than just drop down menu selects. So I hit D to uh, delete those and put them in the copy buffer. And uh, I'm going to uh, put a placeholder here. Something that won't really do anything. Uh, let's see. It'll go with an HTML comment. Uh, select here so that I know where to come back to later I can just search on select here and if at very least I can search on the word select because I remember that's what I'm uh, trying to do make new select uh, options so uh, bn for buffer next I think I only have these two files loaded at the moment and there's going to be a spot where I send back to the template, the Jinja 2 template, uh, the invoke mode. So all I have to do really is search on invoke mode. And it's not going to be used in so many places that I can't just hit N to next through the document and lo and behold we find them here. This is the one that happens when you are in streaming mode after the button has been pressed coming back probably from a post method submit and pipulate is pipulating. We're not interested in that. We're interested in this where if it is the initial build of the form as a response of a get method request. And here I am going to, since I'm carrying it around in my delete buffer, I might as well paste it in here, right? Now, I can't save it or anything. It's kind of like bad code if I did, but what I'll do is I'll set a, uh, a variable equal to this. So the way we would do this, that in Python, is we would go into insert mode, and we would say, uh, call it what it is, it's a menu. Menu. And again, my... Uh, Internet connection's a little bit slow. I'm actually working on a remote uh, server. This is a server running out on the Rackspace cloud. So it sometimes takes a moment to catch up with me. Um, but this is the spirit of the thing. I just built a uh, string, which is the contents of the menu. So now I can save that. And you'll see, whenever I save, this is going to restart the server. You can see, detect, detected change in the pipulate file, restarting. And if it was bad code, it wouldn't restart. We would not have the pipulate server right, running right now. Hey, look, my thumbnail appeared on the last video upload. Hooray. So, the point now is to pass that value right back from the calling flask main file to the Jinja2 template it's using here with a render template call. So, shift 4 to jump to the end of the line, I to go into insert mode, 
space, no, not a space, comma space, because we're going to be passing another name value pair. This is that KW args asterisk asterisk feature of Python, where you can just stuff arbitrary numbers of parameters onto certain temp onto certain uh, API calls that are expecting that, and they know how to deal with it. So in this case, it's a call to render underscore template, and we're going to send it menu equals, uh, let's see, no, widget. It could be anything. Widget equals menu. And of course, menu is the value we set up uh, over there. So whereas you have to the left, invoke mode equals show button, when any call to invoke mode from the template will show the contents of show button. Similarly, I save, switch to my template file, and when it catches up with me, now we know exactly what to show. Uh, where that comment is. It's not form dot uh, mode. It is. Let's see. Yeah, I was really just overcomplicating it. Uh, I'm going to delete everything there. Uh, go into insert mode. Go over here. And, uh, catch up. I really shouldn't be making a video with such a slow internet connection. It makes you all wait. Well, anticipation is half the fun. Uh, we just made up a, a term called widget, which will carry the value of that menu as a string. So I should be able to just save this. That's the Jinja 2 way of accessing a value that you passed on the parameter the, using the name. So again, you can see it's restarting. And I should have done a before and after, huh? Well, here's the before. This is when it was uh, actually residing as a uh, HTML text in the Jinja 2 template file, which is slash template slash pipulate dot html now I have that same menu text residing in drumroll please the calling flask file it's a little anticlimactic it's been long enough so that I have to log in but I can never log in too many times and show you the awesomeness of OAuth 2 as the login method to keep this secure because these little servers you're going to be using hold no data and you'll be able to throw them away or whatever. Ah, I am getting something like neutralized output. I need to figure out the way to pass raw unescaped HTML value uh, for display as HTML. Right now it's being escaped, neutralized, whatever you want to call it so that these, if I were to view source on this, you would see ambersand number sign LT semicolon for uh, the uh, escaped uh, words for a less than sign. Greater than has the same thing. And so this is a success, and I'm not going to extend this video out any longer than I need to. You've seen me pass the value. Now I've got to neutralize it or unneutralize it raw it, as it were. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon. Don't forget to subscribe.